So this is my second time filming. I'm just gonna see if I can just close this door gently and quickly film this. While the dog has been played with, has been distracted with a chew toy because I tried to film it earlier and she, it was no good. <laughs> so I'm filming it again. I'm also trying a different location. So welcome to my home office. I feel like I can hear a slight echo, so I do apologise. I do apologise for the dog in the background. I should probably have started with the intro first, shouldn't I? Hi, my name is Caroline, and I am the lady behind Caroline's Knits, obviously. I live in Scotland with my husband, Ben, and our dog, Fela, who is the reason for the chewing in the background and the menace um, that disturbed my filming earlier and why I thought I'd try it one more time. And I hope um, after when you film a second time, it's like once you've said it all once, it's much easier to film again. Um, today is a bit um, of a deviation from my usual. I think I'm going to call this sort of like not knitting podcast, um, Knit with Caroline. And it's just a little opinion piece. Um, and I have a few different ideas, but um, I'm sure more will come up. Um, I am looking particularly glam for Thursday, but um, hopefully... Um, this video will um, make you think. I am hoping it will lead to a bit of discussion. This isn't a video to bash designers, which I hope will become obvious. I have many friends who are designers and I respect them so much. Um, so it's not meant to be like a bashing or a, anything of that kind of nature. It's just um, supposed to be some of the reasons that I have thought about not designing. Um, if you have any sort of comments, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Um, and I am ready to get started. Um, I have 10 different reasons and a reason number one um, that I don't want to design, which is probably the absolute major one is, so far I've had no reason to, I haven't had an idea yet that I felt like I couldn't find a pattern that sort of fulfilled the want or desire that I had. And so, yeah, I haven't struggled to find a pattern and so there hasn't really been something so special that I felt the need to go through this whole process that I am about to discuss. Reason number two, the upfront costs of publishing a pattern. Um, so when you publish a pattern, uh, when you publish that, when you write a pattern, um, many people obviously pay for tech editor, which my understanding is, is really worth the cost. Um, if you do sell patterns, you have to, um, unless you sell them through Ravelry or any kind of thing, you do have to have a, a website, you have to pay for hosting costs for all of this and set that up. And the thing about tech editing is that it is an upfront cost that you are not guaranteed to earn back. Obviously, the very big designers have no trouble earning this money back. I'm sure Petit Knit, if she does have a tech editor, doesn't struggle to get that money back. But if you are a smaller designer, it's maybe your first design, then there's no guarantee that the, um, the money that you spend on it, you'll get it back. My understanding is that the cost of tech editing widely sort of varies depending on the type of pattern. Um, for first time designer, often you have, you go through a lot more rounds of tech editing because you have made more errors and you've never written a pattern before. And as you get more experience, it's less because you sort of build a template to how you write patterns and you learn from your mistakes. Um, and then obviously tech editing is one, but if you pay for grading, like my friend Lissy has done for her first sweater and the first cardigan, then on top of that, you have the cost of grading and we can, you know, it can range anywhere from less than a hundred pounds to several hundred pounds, depending on, on what you sort of go through. Reason number three is being willing to frog, start over, trying again, refine all of these things. Now, I don't think I'm a purely product knitter. I do like the sort of process of knitting, but there's no doubt for me that I knit to finish. Um, I apologise for the slight interruption. I had something, um, <laughs> I had something I had to deal with, but I am back and I'm going to get back to point number three, which is being willing to frog, start over, trying again, refine. And as I was saying, as much as I'm not a purely a product knitter, there's no doubt for me that I work on things to finish them. And if you want to be at least a good designer, you have to accept that sometimes you might think, um, you know, that you've done the right neckline, but when the design is finished, it's just not right. Or you want a certain sleeve shape, but when you finish the design, it's just not right. And you have to be willing to frog, 
and knit back and retry it. And sometimes you might have to knit the same design, you know, once or, you know, an extra time or even two times more just to make sure it's completely right. And I just know I do not have the patience for it. On knit night, um, many a times I've seen Laura just be like, oh, well, this didn't work and just start ripping back. And every time I'm like, oh, it was fine. You could have made it work. And she's like, oh, well, I'll just do it once again. And I do just not have that determination. Fourth reason is dealing with test knitters, selecting them. Um, what if they don't finish the garment in times of dealing with deadlines? What if they don't do it at all? Making sure that you pick a wide variety enough of test knitters, all of these things. Um, I know recently there's been a lot of chat about um, what designers should do to make testing a good experience for testers but as someone who has tested quite frequently and for quite a few different designers I have lots of respect for people who do it because it's a lot of work if you have graded a size inclusive pattern and you have more than one test of each size so that you're sure the pattern gets tested all of a sudden you could be dealing with 20 25 people and that's a lot of work um, when you get to that stage not to forget that certain designs you know, if you want to give people long enough, you have to hit just the right season to release a pattern. But if the testers need five, you know, needs an extra week, or maybe you need to give them like two months to test a really big project, or for some, you might not be in the right season. And there's so much with test fitting from a designer's perspective, that's quite difficult. And that doesn't even include the current discussions around um, pattern, um, not pattern, yarn support and all of those kind of things that also comes along with it. Number five, originality and at times the lack thereof. Um, I feel like um, I feel like I there was some um, some designers recently that kind of said there's no need to bring out more basic designs. There's plenty, and I personally do not agree with that. If you are willing to go through um, paying for a tech editor and writing up a proper pattern and picking testers and you can find testers for your pattern and you're willing to go through this whole like pre-releasing um, workflow, then you know what? Be my guest. No one is forcing anyone to buy a pattern. So if you bring out a pattern and no one, you know, you, you kind of release a design there's no desire for, then you know what? I'm not going to be mad about it. It's, it's not... I don't think we should gatekeep who gets to be designers and who doesn't, basically. However, personally for me, I think I'd struggle with being sure that my idea is original enough, it's worth it. And again, I think you do need a certain level of originality to feel like there's like it's worthwhile going through the process. And that leads to number six, which is controversy. Um, as much as social media undoubtedly is a big part of why we have um, so many lovely designers and um, it's a great way to get your designs out there and it's probably one of the only ways if you're being completely honest. There's also a lot of controversy, there's things around are you being inclusive enough, have you graced the pattern um, so it fits a big enough range of sizes, are the gaps between the sizes good enough so that it fits them all, have you done it so well that someone isn't going to say oh yeah this designer doesn't grade her bigger sizes well enough. Um, then there are things like, have you copied someone else? Is that pattern, you know, has it already been done? And at the end of the day, you know, knitting is just knits and pearls. There's only so many designs you can come up with. Even if you have original lace patterns or stitch patterns, it is always in some shape or form going to look similar to someone else's pattern. And then all of a sudden people might say, oh, did you know this person did it before you? you know, all of these things and all of that controversy could really put me off. I know when people, you know, when designers get, um, you know, sort of gets hate or gets lots of comments around, oh, well, you know, I've seen that striped sweater before, you're not original at all, you've just stolen it from someone else. It's really upsetting to the person behind the screen. And sometimes I think social media can, as much as it can be a lovely place, it can really be the opposite, especially for designers. Um, and all of that controversy, I just, I just don't have the desire to bring into my life, to be honest. Seven, a lot of time spent not knitting. There's a lot of admin to having um, released designs. And this was actually of my designing friends, the most common thing people put in the question box that I put up on Instagram. 
that the admin is time consuming. First of all, does writing the pattern, you have to write good notes, you have to write up the pattern and writing a long pattern can take a, you know, writing a sweater pattern can take a long time. There's a lot of bases that you have to cover. Then there's all the admin of the test knitting process, being available, making changes as they come in, all of these things. And then once the pattern is released, you actually get a surprising amount of emails for pattern support on top of everything else. And it's extra time taken away from what, why you do it in the first place, I presume, which is that you love knitting. Um, a lot of designing isn't actually knitting. It's all of the other bits around it. A, um, this I thought was another one that came in on the question box that I personally had not considered, which is that in the designing process, you have to stay really consistent with gauge. You know, you have to make sure that, you know, whatever you say, you know, how many stitches and rows and 10 centimetres is how many stitches you have in, you know, in 10 centimetres, all your pattern doesn't work. Um, that's a big pressure. And as a test knitter, it's also a pressure that you have, but often it matters ever so slightly less as a test knitter, as much as it's very important. Um, but as a designer, it really does, because your first, you know, your own sample will provide the basis of everything else. Nine. This one, I think, again, social media is a big part of it. And I think there is a big pressure for for designers to be really active on social media. Um, so I've called point number nine interest and noise sales. But I think it goes back to um, some of the earlier things, this point nine, which is you have to be active on social media. You have to have a presence, right? You have to post frequently enough. Um, you might have to do some stories as well so people feel connected to you. I think increasingly we're seeing designers uh, do podcasts and in some shape or form it's also, you know, you have to then strike a balance because someone else in the question box has said, um, oh, I don't want people to feel like I'm just doing it to plug my own patterns, right? So it's always such a, a fine balance between balancing all of these things and you have to show enough of a design that you get interest. You want people to look at your design and like the look of it. You know, even if it is a, a standard raglan sweater, if people are really interested in it, you might think, right, it's worth this process, I'm gonna release it. So you go through whole, this whole process and you along the way, you might get lots of, lots of interest. You know, people asking, when is it done? Can I test it? People asking to test it before it's ready to be tested, maybe all of these things. And once you show a design, you might have people constantly asking when it's ready, even if it's going to be a long time. And then it can still result in absolutely no sales. And I think as a designer, that's the most heartbreaking thing is if you've spent all this time and effort and then it flops. And my understanding is it's not always obvious what designs are going to do well and what designs are not. Sometimes you think something is going to do really well and then it just doesn't. Um, and considering all of these things around it, it can be a lot of time um, that you've sort of spent on it. 10. And this one is actually a major, major, major one for me personally. And it's something I think a lot about um, when it comes to everything I do when it comes to knitting, which is that knitting at the very end of the day for me is a hobby and I don't do it to earn money. I only do it as much as I find it fun. So... Um, I think designing is, is something some people see as a way to earn money and maybe also to earn easy money. Um, but I think as we've covered, I don't think it is easy money. <laughs> you know, the if you actually break it down, how much work you have to put into release a pattern, all of a sudden it's not like, you know, you just write up a pattern one afternoon, release it the next, and then all of a sudden you've earned several thousand pounds, right? Um, and I think for me, making you know, working at something to earn me money can really kill my joy for doing it. So um, another example is I do my own gel nails and I could probably qualify properly, get like a license and an insurance and I could start doing it for other people. But for both knitting and nails, I do it for myself. And if I had to earn money from it, it really take the joy away. I think we live in a time where everything has to be monetized. It has to be something we can earn money from and we have to have side hustles and all of these things. And there's nothing wrong with wanting something to just be for fun. Now, um, obviously, Rebecca from the Korea Bea has gone through the designing process to see what it's like. And I don't think her aim is to, to live off nowhere design or anything. So it's not to say you can't do it as like doing it for fun. 
Um, but I think the pressure of of earning money for me would really take the joy away. Um, and it's there's nothing wrong with it just being for fun. And I think in general, it's something I, I think a lot about when it comes to these things, because social media is such a big part of it. Um, I personally have been stagnant growth wise for probably most of 2022. It's I have capped out about five ish K on, on both Instagram and YouTube. And every time I'm about to get upset by, I'm like, but I don't think I'm willing to put in the work to grow any bigger. And you kind of have to, you have to think about these things if it's like something that you live off, right? You can't just say, well, I'm just going to take two months off posting um, because it's a business and it's not just for fun. So those are my 10 reasons. I hope they've not come across as controversial. I've had to rush a little bit more um, than I kind of expected, but the dog is somewhere outside, probably digging down a treat now. Um, so it meant I didn't get disturbed and I hope short and sweet is the way to go. Um, so please let me know what you think. Are there any points that I have missed? Um, I also think it'd be lovely if people who design maybe leave some reasons to design in case I've turned people off. And um, if you've enjoyed my content and it's your first time here, I do do the regular knitting podcast as well. And there's several episodes for you to watch if you'd like. And I hope to see you again. Bye.